This is the new Sony a7 IV. It has a flippy screen. It's about time, right? 4K, 10-bit, 422 recording, and also there's no record limit, so you can shoot over 30 minutes. So I'm excited about this camera. Let's get into it. So obviously this is the next camera to the very famous A7 III. Wow, everyone loved that camera. I eventually moved on to it because I was waiting for the A7S III during that time. And then I just caved. I was like, oh my God, the A7S III is not gonna come out for a super long time. So I got the A7 III. I have over a year of YouTube videos just with that camera. It was so great. However, now that I'm shooting with the Sony a7S III, FX3, FX6, um, you really do notice the difference between 10-bit 422, mostly the 10-bit part. And just the, the color in these new Sony cameras, they have arrived. Welcome, Sony. Everything looks so amazing straight out of camera with a standard picture profile. And in true Sony-like fashion, they're really not holding back. They have S Cinetone in this camera as well. So hopefully if you're shooting this camera mixed in with some of their cinema lines, it'll look good. Okay, so we have more megapixels opposed to the 24 megapixels of last year. We now have 33 full frame lens, 15 stops of dynamic range, and you have 10 bit HEIF photo formats, of course, with RAW. You also have the uncompressed RAW. Remember, this camera is kind of like the hybrid camera. So you have a high pixel count for those photos. They're looking crispy. You can crop in, everything's great. But also, you have some really powerful video modes, which we're gonna get into. It has new and improved autofocus, including including IAF with humans, animals, and birds. That's gonna be perfect for maximum Judy pictures. And my two favorite additions to this camera, which man, I'm kinda like, I wish I had it in my A7S III, is this focus map thing and also the breathing compensation. So let's start with the focus map thing technical terms. So this is going to be so great, especially when you're using like a very low f-stop lens, say an f1.2, and you really want that shallow depth of field. So this focus map is a really cool way to tell what's in focus. Basically, the part of the image with no color is what's in focus, and then the blue image is what is behind the focus, and then the red is what is in front of the focus. So this is gonna be really cool for not just telling what's in focus, but also if you're manually racking the focus, you know, it's gonna be easier to tell, okay, do I go left on this focus ring or right on the focus ring. Usually I just have this top custom button to magnify the image to make sure things are in focus and I use that even while recording. Um, but this is going to be like such a better visual way to really view it without having to click buttons and to zoom into the image. Like when, when they were showing me this, I was like, oh yeah, this makes sense. You also have this breathing compensation. So with lenses, when you're racking focus, again, sometimes it looks like the, the focal length is changing when, you know, focusing super close and then to super far away. So this is some software magic, which basically eliminates that and just renders it non-existent. Cool, awesome. I think fancy cameras, mirrorless cameras, DSLR cameras, if you still have a DSLR, um, they just kind of stay dumb when phones are getting so smart with like smart HDR. And you know, if you notice, they're not really getting more megapixels, they're just getting smarter uh, with software. And so I think it's really smart when cameras, Sony, Canon, Panasonic, Blackmagic, if they can do whatever they can to enhance the software of their cameras to help us out, make cameras more smart, I think that's like the next wave that will enable manufacturers to differentiate themselves uh, besides, you know, the just classic like pixels and resolution and all of that. Some other examples of that is like the ZV-1 has the skin smoothing feature in camera um, and also the product highlight feature where you can switch that on and that means, hey, if I hold up a product like my new Pitch Pods, hey, if you need an AirPod case, you can go to peachymerch.com. Um, it'll prioritize this product it'll put it in focus and it'll make my face, you know, not the focus of the shot. Because usually when you have face autofocus on, if I put a product here, it'd still stay on my face. So software improvements, yes, more please. Thank goodness we have the new menu system on here. It is touch, so you can scroll through via touch, but it's just much easier to see things. And then it's also separated based on if you're in video mode, photo mode, or S and Q. So you can have different custom function buttons depending on what mode you're in. Um, and this new menu, yeah, like, so glad we don't have to deal with the classic Sony menus anymore. And if you're still confused, where does this camera fit in? You know, the Sony a7S III, that is for low light and video. If you're a video creator, that's kind of the camera. If you're looking into mirrorless, if you're a photographer, the Sony a7R, high megapixel count, that's for you photo people, but it also has amazing 4K recording. And then the top of the top flagship of the flagship is their A9, uh, which does 8K, does super high speed photography. And if you basically want 
want everything for all of the monies? That camera. This camera sits right in the middle at a more affordable price point, right? And it does a great job with both photos and videos. We don't have an official price right now, we just have a price range, so if I get that information in the next 24 hours, I will put it here. Coming from the a7S III, these buttons are super familiar to me. You got a lot of action with the buttons. When you press it, you're like, oh yeah, I pressed a button. And then I don't even know what they call this, like a thumb pad thing. This is my favorite thing to just move around the menus and select. Big fan of that. And the buttons on the top are a little different. Now you have the selection of video, photo, and S and Q down below. And then up at the top, you have the manual shutter priority, aperture priority, and your custom settings. You have three custom settings. Now the exposure dial, doesn't have the you know plus 0.3 plus 0.7 uh, so there's no markings but you can lock it so you still have that ability but i imagine i guess just getting a wheel without markings on it is cheaper and that's just part of like the cost savings of a uh, more affordable camera photographers you obviously have more pixels great good um, but you also have 10 frames per second with consistent autofocus for continuous 828 uncompressed raw images plus jpeg shooting which is hey good awesome i never shoot uncompressed raw because it's just too much storage compressed raw we have two card slots on the side. The first slot does CF Express Type A and an SD, um, so you can fit either one into that slot. And then the second one only does SD. That is different from the A7S III. Um, the A7S III, you can do either or in both of them. Now that this camera shoots 4K 10-bit 4 2 2, uh, all of the colors, all of the pixels, um, I would recommend purchasing V90 SD cards if you don't want to go a CF Express Type A. You just need more speed. It's simple as that. I know in the B-roll there is a Lexar V90 and those SD cards are fine, but I actually found that my favorite ones are the Kingston 256 gigabytes. Uh, this is a great amount of storage. You can just shoot, shoot all you want. And I've also found them to be extremely reliable and extremely fast and I think the price point is just like is kind of perfect. I'll put my affiliate link down in the description below if you want to check those out and then of course if you want to take it one step further you can go with the CF Express Type A. Um, they are faster which is great uh, but I just found I like V90 SD cards because hey computers have SD card slots again and it's just more convenient. Okay, so for me, having a hybrid camera like this is extremely handy for one thing, not just pictures as a whole, Instagram pictures, okay, great, but thumbnails. With thumbnails, I like to shoot a little bit wider and then crop in, and also I do a lot of pixel peeping, you know, I cut around my person, do all of the Photoshopping, so obviously having more pixels um, is just going to help me with more clarity, more sharpness, big fan of that. I've actually used my Leica Q2 for a lot of thumbnails just because that's like like 42 megabytes, um, but lately I've been lazy and I've been shooting a lot of them with the A7S III. And once you start zooming in, you know, like 150%, 200%, you're just like, okay, that's where you start seeing the downside of having 12 megapixels. But that camera's purpose is mostly for video. Okay, my video friends, which I'm sure most of you guys watching this video are like, hey, should this replace my A7 III? Should I go with this instead of the A7S III, right? Well, okay there's some things. So we do 4K up to 60 frames per second. So you don't have 4K 120 frames per second like the A7S III. So in all of the 4K modes, they're doing some version of oversampling. So in 30 frames and 24, it's that 7K oversampling. And then when you switch to 4K 60 frames, it's doing 4.6K oversampling. Um, but it goes into super 35 crop mode, which I think will probably be the most scandalous part of this camera for sure. Um, like why did they do that, right? So they wanted to do that to be able to not deal with pixel binning. So when you go into the crop mode, you have full pixel readout, no pixel binning. Pixel binning reduces the effective resolution of your shot when you essentially combine like four pixels on your sensor into one. Um, so it kind of reduces the like quality of your shot, but I would be curious if there is an option to like switch this on and off, really what would be that big of a difference of the cropped in, no pixel binning versus not cropped in, but with pixel binning. I wonder if that's something they can just like throw at us with a software update to uh, flip on and on, I'm not sure. So again, if you want that super slow-mo, you can always go down to 1080 to get 120 frames per second. But remember 4K 60 is the highest. Um, you can do 4K 120 with the A7S III. So you also do have that Sony hot shoe up here. So you're able to connect the uh, digital audio interface that is being shipped with the FX3. You can also use their Sony microphone that doesn't require any cables 
to plug into your camera, but it just connects via the hot shoe. I do not like that little mic. I'm a big fan of the digital audio interface from the FX3, but that small mic, it, you, you can't change the levels. It basically just auto does everything. And you can just so clearly hear the noise of the audio preamps on the camera. So I do not recommend that mic at all. I still go with a Rode VideoMic Pro for shotgun, uh, audio, but that will be helpful for people for sure. But yeah, don't stay away from that little mic. We have active mode image stabilization, which is just really great stabilization. I'm used to it on the ASIN S3 and it does a great job. And you don't have to worry about any of that wobble that Canon mirrorless cameras deal with when using a wide lens and also stabilization at the same time. Um, the hashtag wobble gate, it's still a thing. Like it's so, obvious when I watch YouTube videos, I'm like, oh, they're using Canon mirrorless because of the wobble wobble in the background. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe do a little YouTube search. Okay, a7 IV with a 16 to 35 lens with optical image stabilization, active stabilization on. This is the audio from the actual camera, built-in audio, standard picture profile. It's a very overcasty day and I'm just gonna switch to Acinetone right now. Okay, Acinetone, and as I was going through the settings, you know, there's a lot of stuff they, they actually didn't even tell me, like this has the skin smooth that you've seen on the ZV-1 and the other Sony cameras, so man, this camera deserves a deep dive, and I promise, guys, I will do part two, where like the whole video is shot with the a7 IV, because I think a lot of people are gonna be curious about this camera, um, but it's good to get all the facts out, get some test shots. Other great features, you have touch tracking, yay, not a full touch screen, but you can use it for focus. Um, I've mentioned already a Cinetone, which is just a great overall picture profile. It's a little bit more flat. You can go for more of that cinematic look when color grading, um, but guys, standard picture profile, if you don't do a lot of color grading, just stick in that. It's, it's really fantastic. And the last, but certainly not least, which actually this might be the most controversial thing about this camera, not the uh, cropping in at 4K60, is the overheating. Dun Dun, dun. Okay, here's the thing though, with Sony cameras, you can go into the settings and you can change the like heat settings from standard to high. All of our overheating issues were eliminated once we turned it to high. What does that mean? Basically your camera is going to get hot, but when it came to the standard heat settings, it was XAVC-HS, it was XAVC-S, um, not just 4K 60, uh, but literally like 4K 24 frames per second, just in an office, kind of timing out around 20 minutes. Butt sneeze. <laughs> I love my cat Judy but I wouldn't say allergic, just slightly nuanced by cat hair. It's okay, I'd rather have his love in my life. So I feel like people are gonna sit there, record for 30 minutes, and then have a camera that just automatically shuts off because it's overheating, they're gonna freak out, and they're gonna return their camera. So far, we've only had a few days testing this camera. Move the setting to high. We don't have any issues. We can record over 30 minutes. Um, you know, we can go in between slow-mo and 4K24 and 4K60 and S&Q 1080, 120, and it's no problem. I wish I could like talk to other people who have this camera. I don't know who, who have it. Um, so I will be curious to see what other people say about this. There might be an initial overheating freak out, but I am here to say, switch the setting and it will be fine. And I will follow up in a full on review. Um, okay, anything else? So you have a better connection with the Imaging Edge app uh, that connects your camera via Bluetooth to either your phone or your iPad. Big fan of this app. When I'm not at my home office or the office, I use this to kind of double as what I use my teleprompter setup for. So I can very clearly see my image. Um, I can change the settings, which is great, via the app so I don't have to get up and change it in the camera. And then also with my iPad, I have like a travel mouse so I can just switch in between the imaging app and also my notes and it's just a really great setup. Um, I feel like that app is like low key, low key, like I feel like it's too low key cause it's so good. And also you can use this camera as a webcam by just connecting it via the USB-C connection, which is great. Um, oh, I didn't even go through the, uh, the ports, right? But it's very similar. So you have a headphone, you have a mic jack, USB-C, micro USB, and then a full HDMI, woo! This is exciting for people that you have a full HDMI. Um, so I think that rounds out this camera. Oh goodness gosh, I, I love when I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna be a super quick, 
just run through and then I'll do a full review later, which I am going to do. So stick around, make sure you subscribe, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, if you appreciated this video and you have maybe some AirPods that need a beautiful fuzzy case or maybe some watch bands, or I think we have like, 10 t-shirts left, stay peachy t-shirts. Well, you can go to peachymerch.com to, to check out that. And the AirPods third generation just came out. We do have those, we are making those, but because they just came out, they'll be shipping in about a month or so. I don't know, I'll put, I'll put the website up here. Um, but these AirPod Pros cases and the normal ones should be shipping now. All that information is on the website. Nice and fuzzy, says stay peachy on the back. I love this print so much. And then we of course have the, the dark mode version of the fuzzy peach pods. If you're the more subtle type, you know, you, you can cop those too, but um, thank you so much for joining me on this video. Let me know what you think of this camera. Um, you know, a lot of great power packed into the camera. I know there's gonna be people pissed off about the like four, like no 4K 120 frames per second, but it's like, they gotta save something for their higher level cameras, right? But then there's stuff like the breathing and the focus mapping that is not in the A7S III. So I actually wish I had that. So yeah, lots of things to comment on. Let me know if you like this video, hit the subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And until next time, everyone, stay peachy. Okay, bye.